schedule for the agenda. Okay, here we go. I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, good morning. This is the Wednesday, September 18th meeting of the Council on Aging Board of Directors. My name is Richard Wastack. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order at actually 10.05 a.m. Uh, as we get started, I will ask initially for a motion to approve the minutes of our last meeting. I would so move. Moved, moved and seconded. Any discussion? Changes, alterations to any of those minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we are meeting today here at the Howard Community Center in the studio of Channel 18, and we have no public present with us here today, so there is no public comment. We have a, an agenda that's packed today, and we have another meeting after this talking about the new pro year-long program that will be conducted about the needs assessment for the Council on Aging. So I'm going to go directly to our director for okay. her report, which will be relatively brief today. Yes, it will be. Um, just a quick note, um, our social services coordinator did start on Monday, and I, ha I plan to have her come into the next board meeting um, to meet everybody and, well, and say hi to the community, sure. um, just giving her the first week to get settled. Um, and then um, that was the only important update I need to give today, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm mistaken. The volunteer luncheon was something that we said yep. we would uh, follow up on today. That is scheduled. The invitations have gone out. Um, the luncheon itself will take place on Tuesday, October 1st from 12 to 1.30. Um, we are going to, the, the fire department is helping us. Um, we're very grateful for their support this year. They are going to um, be outside grilling for us, which we had, they had done a couple of years, well, several years ago now. Um, so burgers, hot dogs, we'll have some vegetarian options for those who choose not to eat the delicious burgers that the fire department <laughs> will be making for us. Um, and the replies, the RSVPs have started to come in. It looks like it, we'll have a good crowd. I would ask the board, if you can attend, it would be wonderful to have you there. And it's a great opportunity for us to serve the volunteers. Yeah. Get plates, bring them to them. Um, and it goes back, oh boy, five years. Mm -hmm. And Angie, you've been there in the past, yeah, haven't yeah, you? Ralph, been, have you been there to I it? Have, yeah. yeah. And Carol, have you been? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a great event. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's a great opportunity for us to say thank you as a board to the volunteers. So if you can be there, it would be great. And as we get there, if we can assist getting people seats, welcoming them, and then bringing plates over, that would be wonderful. So, Unfortunately, it does not conflict with volleyball. <laughs> it does not conflict? <laughs> Which ends at 1 o'clock. I'll be there. Oh, yeah. the sacrifices you make, Ralph, well, for well, this committee are just awesome. <laughs> so if there's no other old business, I think it's important that we go directly to the new business, again, with time constraints, because it's a long discussion. And as I mentioned, that this process that we're going through today is a request of the select board and the town administrator that Mid-Cape Church Homes has filed a letter of intent with the state. And they're looking to um, build upwards of 248 affordable properties in the North Howard section of town. And once that application is submitted, the town has 30 days to respond. And since that was initiated in the past week, this is the only attempt that we will have it as a formal meeting to discuss it. The select board and the town administrator request input from committees and departments. And I like having the opportunity for the committee to weigh in. And this is an open discussion, okay? And if you take just a moment to read what is here, this is the overall discussion of the program itself. Now, we do have someone on our committee who is a neighbor and who has been following along pretty closely for the last couple of years. Angie, do you want to speak first about it, about the general program of what your understanding is? Okay. I, I probably have a bias. I'm going to be honest because I live in the North Howard area and it's all residential homes. Mm -hmm. And um, I do understand that we need housing. I do understand that, I, and especially for young people. I was concerned because it's, um, 
it's now 248 in units in it ranged from talking um, and they wanted like three story building up three to four story apartment buildings um, I didn't know how it was really going to impact our community mm -hmm. you know as opposed to little residential homes mm -hmm. so I, I had suggested you know could they make smaller homes um, so that it kind of blends in and fits with the neighborhood um, right. the part that I worry about is I don't know if you've ever been to Hyannis behind the um, Home Depot did you see those huge apartment yeah. mm -hmm. complexes mm -hmm. that they put yeah. in so mm -hmm. you know um, I just visualize all those kinds of things and those kinds of changes right and I also was concerned with who really is getting access to the homes because I would love to see young people uh, get into home young people who can't afford it, young teachers professionals mm -hmm. you know that can't afford rent and they can't afford a uh, home so I don't know who really is going to be getting into these uh, complexes mm -hmm. So I'd like, I'd like to have permanent people stay in our town so they sure. make boots and, you know. Exactly. So just a couple of things. If you look at the first page, it is their proposal looks at potentially, when completed, 248 units done in five phases, starting with 50 rental units. And I think Angie brings up some great, great points. And I'm not a proponent nor an opponent of this project. Mm -hmm. It's just a discussion of it and then concerns that we as a board for the Council on Aging may have as it impacts the demographic of people that we represent. Mm -hmm. So as you look at it, you see it's starting out first phase of 50 units in three buildings, two townhouse buildings, um, and a three-story corridor building. That would have 36 units in it. Four future phases would have 198 additional mixed income units. I want to just bring your attention to page two and a discussion of affordability. And those of you who know me, I am a housing advocate. I, I believe in affordable housing. I've been involved in a number of different developments within the community, including Habitat. And the discussion is of income tiers of who comes in. And we get into what's affordable today. And the area AMI is what's called the area median income for Bonstable County dictates the area number. And I believe, and Julie, if you know this better than I, it's in the ballpark of $80,000 is yeah. the area median income. So when you look at in that particular chart there, 22% will be people earning up to 30% of $80,000. And that was for a single individual Correct. year, right? Yep. Okay, so family. Right, right. Would, would, would go larger. Right. And again, you look at an, an additional 45% would be earning between 50 and 60%, in that 40 to $50,000 range. And then a third of them would be for those earning 80 to 110%, which may be classified as available housing. It is still affordable under the definitions, the HUD definitions. And when we look at that, I will look, we just hired a staff member here. And there was a salary range. What was the range without the definite salary, but the salary range was? So it's an hourly position. Right. Um, hourly, the range started at approximately $28 an hour, goes up to approximately $34 an hour. Yeah. Um, and that works out, if you are in the middle of that range, it works out to just over $50,000 a year. Okay, so that's starting when you look at public safety, for instance, okay, it's a fifty to $60,000 range to start. Uh, Angie, you've been out, you've been retired for a while, so, so the teacher ranges might be different. But my understanding is the teacher ranges, first year to third year, is in that forty to $60,000 range starting out. That's for an individual person. Not saying if someone's you know raising a child alone, a single parent. Um, so when you look at the the scheme, there are different levels for people coming in, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, when you look at the other Mid Cape Church home developments in town, Pine Oaks, it's the same sliding scale. There is um, low income, and then there's se severe low income. And when you look at the 30%, it's basically looking at $24,000 and less a year. 
you know, I don't, anyone could pay live on anything for twenty-four thousand dollars a year. And we see that from the assessor's department, the people who are just living on Social Security. We see that yeah. mm -hmm. consistently. Mm -hmm. And those are people we're helping through tax credits of, of various kinds. So it's a sliding scale. I don't want to dominate. I want to hear what you have to say. I will say this, that there's not a question we have an affordable housing crisis. We have a housing crisis. Mm -hmm. Coming from the real estate industry, Carol, you understand that entry level today for people buying a home <clears throat> that's not a condo is five to six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars for an entry level yeah, home. That's low level. It yeah. is. Yeah. And, and so we have a housing issue. How we solve it is another story. And that's where we are here today. So I'd love to open it. You know, if there are questions we can answer from the actual proposal, we will do so. But your thoughts, because I think this is what we need to look at before we arrive at making a statement, an official statement from the board. So, John, do you want to yeah, start? Yeah, um, three things I can think of. Uh, one is when I read the paperwork, it mentioned that all the housing was rentals. Mm -hmm. So that leads to the next question is what will be the rental rate? And I'm pretty sure at the other Pine Oaks, it's like a percentage of their income mm -hmm. versus a like a flat rate. Mm -hmm. So would it be a similar percentage of income? Um, it is structured a bit differently. Um, there's a different funding source for the first phases of Pine Oaks um, compared to this phase. Um, I, seeing if I have the, the doc, if, you know, if you looked at the documents yeah. I sent out, yeah. they were voluminous. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I I don't remember what the lowest what the lowest tier would be paying. Yeah. That's where I'm I'm unclear on that. But the sixty percent range, um, the rent for a one bedroom apartment was approximately fifteen hundred dollars, oh, okay. and for the top tier, um, that eighty to one hundred and ten percent AMI, um, it was close to two thousand, but not over two thousand. Okay. I, I think it was about nineteen hundred something. And then the other thing I could think of was. Uh, I guess uh, towns and cities in Massachusetts have like a certain uh, income level housing rate that they're supposed to uh, meet. The yeah. level of affordable housing, yeah. per and, it's 10%. We're not doing that today, right? I don't think Harwich is doing that today. We're not, we're at about 5%. Yeah, so this hopefully would push us up higher. Mm -hmm. The 10% is recommended by the state allows a town to assign mitigation to any development that occurs. What's that mean? So you decide you want to do a 10-lot subdivision. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can now say to, say to you, Ralph, okay, you want to build 10 homes. The town has the right, because we've met <clears throat> the index for affordable housing, mm -hmm. start requiring you to say, okay, one of those needs to be affordable. Well, no, I want to do 10 market rate houses. We've met the guidelines of the 10%. Mitigation can come in many forms. In some communities, what they're doing is saying, okay, a percentage of your development must be affordable. We're a long way away. I, to be very frank with you, the town would need to add a minimum of 33 units a year to achieve that. It's not, I don't see it happening mm -hmm. in a lot of our lifetimes. No. Okay, it's we're a long ways away. Mm -hmm. um, as are most communities. I do not believe that any community on the Cape John has met that threshold. Yeah, I think it would be difficult. Yeah. yeah. Um, probably the only other thing I noticed was that there's only one egress from the plan onto Queen Anne. There's an emergency yeah. entrance over on Main Street. Yeah, across um, the street from me. Right. Yeah, and that was an issue that did come up with the mm -hmm. neighbors mm -hmm. as to, you know, what's happening with the traffic. Mm -hmm. The traffic has to go out on Queen Anne. That, yeah. that was required. Yeah. I mean, there was no way. Yeah. Even before they even bought this property. Yeah. Um, and people were concerned about the traffic because there's so much going on yeah. with the dump road and the businesses. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know how they're going to address that. Yeah. There was a tra There is a traffic study, study, uh, yeah. study yeah. explained okay. in the documents and that were sent out. Let me just say this. In addition to that, as a result of everyone always questions studies. Yeah. Was it good? Was it right? Is it, you know, yeah. does it include? Mm -hmm. So the town, the select board, have contracted to do another traffic study. 
Mid Cape Church Homes contracted to have a traffic study done as required for their proposal. The town is doing their own traffic study, basically at the intersection of Depot and Queen Anne, mm -hmm. Queen Anne and 124, and then they've got another one that's in Howard, which, which does not impact this. But those two, Depot and Queen Anne, and Queen Anne and 124, but we will not have that information prior. Any proposal of this nature is going to have to go through the regulatory process in town. So things like a traffic study, John, yeah. and, and Angie has that done, the town traffic study will be ready at that time. But it, it is, for many, a concern. Yeah. So, Anything else, John? Any? No, it's, it's not really uh, like right now or just uh, talking about things. It's To me, what, think a lot of these things were not concerns. They were just things that I observed. Questions, yeah. Observations, great. Yeah. Well, thank you. Carol. Well, I had a couple of issues with it. This affordable housing, the definition of affordable housing, for one thing, and is there, during the five courses of this operation, is there going to be a sliding scale as to this affordable, what is affordable and what isn't? I believe the rates are set. Yeah, I would hope there'd be some sort of a and a built-in sliding scale for this? So the different income tiers right. yes. will, will have a different rent, but okay. those rents will stay stat those rents are static <clears throat> across everybody who lives there. Where it, so for example at Pine Oaks one, two, and three, residents do pay a portion of their income. It's a formula. They pay a percentage of their income. Mm -hmm. So everyone's I rent guess is my different. concern is the sliding rate of this. Mm -hmm. he, he, I've had, yeah. I just interject. Yeah. Every year the County, the counties, mm -hmm. look at their AMI. Okay. Area median income. That's, that that's changes every year. Because <clears throat> I've seen several instances where people have gone into so called low income housing, even condominiums, and then the increases begin. Mm -hmm. The increases that were never disclosed or never, mm -hmm. never planned for. For instance, this year, um, homeowners insurance created havoc. You know, with, with many people, even across the condominium units. You know, condominium units, their their condominium fees went up far more than they had planned. Mm -hmm. So this is an issue. I also have a, what is workforce housing? Will someone explain that to me? I asked for an explanation of this at town meeting. What is, what is workforce housing? What is, who are the workforce? Well, again, look at the workforce in the community. Yeah, Our exactly. Our teachers workforce, our police officers, Fire department, staff COA. members here, COA, is that workforce housing? Look at the staff that we have in there. Exactly. We have five, are they workforce? I define them as workforce. Exactly. But what about people who work in the industries? Um, I'm doing part time at Star Market. So yeah. what about those cashiers? And I, I mean, I have experience now with several people who have been forced into, you know, really unpleasant living situations. Sure. Because of low income, and are they considered workforce housing, or are we strictly categorizing this as municipal? No, so it's not at all. Okay. If if someone Carol and just um, if I were working at the supermarket mm -hmm. and my income was thirty thousand dollars a year, right, working at the supermarket, mm -hmm. when I look at that, the area median in, median mm -hmm. income is eighty thousand. I'm at. <clears throat> whatever that percentage is, 25, 30, 40 percent of that, okay. I would qualify to live there. Okay. So, so there, isn't, there isn't necessarily a priority on municipal working. No, no, no. It, it, no. It, it, it's it, because the funding mechanism determines who can apply. Okay. All okay. right. I, I believe they are able to to the best of my knowledge, they are able to make a, make Priority. priorities. Right. So, for example, usually when these developments go into a town, the current residents, anyone who already lives or works in Harwich does okay. get priority, for example. Okay. And there may be other priorities that mm -hmm. they set. Okay. And I'm not privy to those, but it could be it could be seniors, it could be people with right. disabilities, it, it okay. could be whatever. So th there is a priority for Harwich residents. There is, or to the best of my knowledge. So, okay. And here's the thing. That's right. important to me. There are other developments mm -hmm. do have priorities. Mm -hmm. um, again, the levels of tier. And again, 
how many of the units, for instance, the, the very, very lowest, lowest, 22% of the units are going, 45%, okay, so now a total of 67% are going to those with incomes less than 60% of AMI. Okay. And that's basically $50,000 and under. Right. Two-thirds of the units will go to that income level. And then when, again, you get into the workforce, the other workforce, a teacher comes in earning forty-five, right. dollars $55,000 a year. They're in that 80 to 110%. And when you talk about the workforce, if someone just came in on a salary range of you know uh, 50 to 60, that upper level, a third of those units would be for, I guess you'd call it, workforce. Okay. But it's all based on income. The other Mid-Cape Church homes, and again, I'm not an advocate, I'm not on their board. Right, right. I, this is just an open discussion with knowledge and dealing with it in the past, mm -hmm. that they have a priority for disability. Okay. They have a priority for ultra low income. Okay. You know, those are at 10% of the area median mm -hmm. income. So there will be some priorities. All of this is gonna be fleshed out in the process. Okay. Okay. This is at least it's the guiding documents we have at the moment. But there's still a whole lot of questions outstanding. Of course, of course. <clears throat> but your concerns are, or, or your observations are important. And, and for us to move forward, if we want to make a determination one way or another, we should say, here are the observations and or concerns that we have. Sure. And pass it forward actually to the town administrator through Julie, which will eventually go to the select board, which will be incorporated to an, a an entire town response to the state. Um, actually, administration is asking that department heads submit their own yep. comments, yep. and then boards and committees right. also set a, so submit a separate. That's set. why. Yep. And again, I'm not in a position to do it with the board of assessors because we're not meeting. Okay. So the administrator, the director of the department, will be doing the response for the board, but it's her response and not the board's. Here we have the opportunity because we're meeting today to send our response. Right. I, I guess primarily what my concern would be, or has been, you know, with, with any of these developments, is there is a sort of come on, an invitation, right? This sounds, these income levels all sound very good. But what happens after a couple of years? It, it's, it's a great question. And I, I'm making sure no, that's getting written that, down is, so we can... You know, that's why I'm talking about the sliding scale kind of thing. Is this something that's going to continue to be affordable? Or is it going to turn into what we have seen many of our cottage colonies turn into? You know, and is it going? My my experience with others who have who uh, that we work with who mm -hmm. live in developments that have um, this sort of structure, this funding funding right. mechanism, and therefore the regulations are set to you know in, um, formulate the rents as required by the the regulations right. and the funding source. Okay. Right. My experience working with those people is that the rents are increased very little and very gradually over time. So they may not have any increase for several years. If it is increased, it's it's a, by a small amount. Okay. Um, I I can't say what's going to happen here because they, di they didn't address that in the plans that they sent to us. Right. But uh, other developments, it, it does tend to work okay. Sure. Okay. Um, and just I'll just add one other comp one other factor for um, that is relevant to our department. Um, so it's not in this four page letter mm -hmm. that um, I gave to you, but deeper in the documents, you can find the split of one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom units. Mm -hmm. um, overwhelmingly, an older adult is going to need a one bedroom unit, mm -hmm. right? They're not raising children anymore. It's just the individual and per perhaps a spouse. Right. So the number of one bedroom units uh, is 82 and that's over the five um, the five phases, so mm -hmm. ultimately 82 units that I, I think it reasonably could be offered to an older adult. They're not earmarked for older okay. adults. They still could go to an individual right. you know, right. who's working on their own, and, um, but I don't think we would see more than 82, or including a spouse, right, units being, go being given to an older adult. Okay. So just thinking about our population. Okay. All right, that those, those are two of my concerns. Anyway, that uh, um, you know the the cost, the relative cost going up, and I think one of the things that concerns me about all of these projects is that there's no pathway to home ownership in any of this, and that's a concern of mine. I think 
you know, when you own a home and you're, you become more involved and I think, you, you know, you're more aware of what's going on. I, I, there's no path to home ownership and all this kind of rental. And I kind of wish there were, there were more options in that regard, you know. Well, that's why I had asked them originally, why couldn't they buy, build smaller homes, the, individual the, yeah, homes that I, were geared for in, in, younger people? And he said it's not financially, it's See, that, not that it, it always comes down to, is there money to be made in it or yeah. not? And that's where the Habitat model, they're not yeah. looking for profit. Right, right. You know, it's a whole different model. Right. And that we've done the Murray Lane in mm -hmm. West Howard. Yeah. But that took two plus years to permit. Sure. Because people, well, I don't want that in my backyard. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the environment is changing mm -hmm. because, you yeah. know, pick up the phone and call a plumber, electrician, carpenter, whatever. Yeah. Good luck. All right, Cal, do you have any other observations? Going to move to Ralph otherwise. Okay, I'm all set. Ralph. First of all, I have no clue where this is. Okay. Um, Where's the location? Queen, Angie, would you? Yes. <laughs> have you driven past the uh, the dump heading toward North Howard? Yeah. Okay. Well, when you go past the dump, um, <laughs> on, on the same side as the dump is on. It's okay. back in the woods there. Okay. There's a whole wooded area. Um, beyond so the power lines. Beyond the power lines, yeah. Heading west. Beyond the pet cemetery. Yes, oh, way, beyond, beyond, way beyond way that. Past, oh, okay. Way past the dump. Way past the dump. Oh, the, you know, you know where North Bain and Queen Anne intersect? It's a Which one? Ralph. North, uh, where Main and Queen Anne Which intersect. Which is Main? What's Main? Main Street. Uh, they used to call yeah, it. Yeah. No. Okay. Check, yeah. check, the, check yeah. the map so you can see. Yeah. Okay. As he's doing that, Angie, I'm going to let Ralph look at that. And we'll yeah. come back to Ralph. Any other observations, well, concerns? I, I think Carol hit the nail on the head on a couple of points that I was really concerned with. Um, obviously, the, the cost, is it going to be changing? Yep. And is and you, you did answer the question, are there priorities going to be given to how it's residents? Yeah, because I do know of young professionals that got jobs, but they had to refuse them because they couldn't get housing. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, I understand we have to accommodate a wide range of people. I understand that. It makes sense. But um, it's good to have working class young people in the area yeah, because they're going to keep the things going. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Um, so um, that would be important for me that if they're going to build this thing. Um, it's, so, it's, and it's I just want to interject. If, yeah, I agree with that. If the town sure. has an opportunity to say, okay, you want input and you're going to give us some standing. Yeah. We want to see some geared towards younger people. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Especially how is residents. I mean, if they want to stay here, I mean, um, or at least come back here, um, it's right. very difficult yeah. for them exactly. to do that. Yeah. And uh, right. you know, I'm hearing from my nephew that you know that we have issues with the fire department now. Yeah, we do. You know, with the, the shifts and so forth, because the, the, they can't. They're uncovered. It's not covered. Right. You know they're having having serious issues with that, right. and they can't hire because they can't house them. Right, and I thought you brought up another very good point. If they're going to change these prices right. within a few, the rental prices within a few years, is it now going to go back now? Okay, for the wealthy, all right. Now they're going to have homes in See, ten it, years. It, will be their place. There, there is exactly. a yes, there, yeah. okay. There is and there's one of the questions that I have. I didn't want to get it to. I'm going to go back to Ralph. When any development of affordability is done. It is done for a period of time. There's something called the subsidized housing inventory, the shy list. You've heard maybe that, that term used, that we have a percentage that goes to that 10% is on the shy list. But when a development is done in a 40B, which is a, a, from the state, their classification, it is affordable for a period. What is the period? Is it 20 years? Is it 50 years? Is it 99 years? Is it in perpetuity? Does it stay affordable forever? Because we've had situations this year alone where those deed restrictions <clears throat> were sunsetted. Mm -hmm. And whether or not those properties were going to continue to remain to be affordable or does it go off and now become market rate? So that's my major question of this. What is the deed restriction for affordability? How long? And I'm hoping, frankly, it's in perpetuity, yeah. that it's forever, so that we're not getting into a That's situation where, where 20 years from now, and I may still be around in 20 years, to say, oh, 
they're no longer affordable. Mm -hmm. That's 248 market rate units. Well, that's why I Not brought affordable. up, the, you know, the example of these cottage colonies. Oh, sure. You know, 99-year right. leases yeah. in 99 you know, years well, does happen. <laughs> and it's happened. Sure. And we've, we've seen it happen, and that's okay. contributed to the crisis. Absolutely. So in terms of time, Ralph, I would like to hear your thoughts, your observations. I don't have much of an input into this income thing and so on. Mm. I just think that we are way behind in building affordable housing. And I think that every opportunity should be taken to build every unit of affordable housing we can build. And all, with all due respect to Angie, I see too much of this not in my backyard stuff, uh, the, the Love Lane thing, and we're fighting about that over in Dennis, which is outrageous. It should be left alone and built. Um, I, I just, I think we ought to let this thing go. Yeah. I, I personally, and that's about the extent of my, of my input. I really, we need every piece of housing we can get. And this is one. Okay. Thank you, Ralph. Lauren, <clears throat> do you have any input? I don't. And it, <clears throat> I, I think it's important because you are, you know, an employee of the town. You know, I, I don't know your financial situation, don't want to know, but do you have thoughts on it as an employee? I know if I was, I mean, I'm obviously married, but like, I would not be able to afford here on just my, like, just my. Mm -hmm. I can live here because my husband makes a lot more than me, um, but like I would not be able to like so like something like this would be like you know if I wasn't married it would be helpful for okay. for for me because like, gotcha. I would not be able to otherwise stay on here. Got it. All right. Um, Julie, take your director hat off for a moment. Okay. Put your municipal employee mother hat on. Um, your thoughts. Sure. Because this is our discussion, not yours. You, you can do your own, but this is for our discussion here. So, um, hard, hard to take my director hat off for this because that's where my focus has been. You know, how, how are our programs going to be impacted? How many sure. more people are going to yeah. be walking through the door? Because um, it's not just the older adults that are moving in. There are going to be families moving in who have their own parents who may need to come to us for certain services, mm -hmm. right? Um, but as a, as a Harwich resident, um, I, I do think about the traffic. Um, I don't. I don't live in this neighborhood, but clearly there's going to be more traffic in the town, and I'm interested in what the traffic study says. Um, I have a child in the school district who's in the elementary school. Mm -hmm. It seems like the classrooms are pretty full right now. Mm -hmm. So, what's the plan for being able to educate the young children of the families that mm -hmm. live there? Um, so, I'm not. I'm not saying that I'm against it or that I think it shouldn't be built. I just want to. I'm like everybody else. I want to know more. <laughs> And I'm curious to hear what other departments have to say sure. too, especially the school system. Because you know, the bottom line is what it is going to impact and how does it impact what we do. We have a very robust Council on Aging. We offer a number of programs and services to our demographic. And when you look at the numbers of one bedrooms, we will see. And, and there, we know there's a need. I know from my other hat and the assessors, there's a huge need for seniors who can't afford their homes, you know, or who do not have a home, who need a place to live. Mm -hmm. But it will impact what's going to happen here. Uh, there's so many different opinions, and knowing we have a housing crisis, there's no question we have it, <clears throat> and how do we address it. My biggest question will come down to, and I don't know if there's a solution at all, is traffic. Because if you look at Queen Anna 124, there are properties on each of those corners. Mm -hmm. There's not enough room to say, okay, we're going to take by eminent domain 30, 40, 50 feet, mm -hmm. and we're going to create a roundabout mm -hmm. to slow the traffic and get things moving. Right. That's not an opportunity. Is it just an assumption that we're going to deal with substantial traffic? If you go to the transfer station right now on a Saturday or Sunday, and you're coming back towards 124, you're going to sit at that light for one or two cycles. Um, that, that's an issue. I don't know if it can be solved. And I'd like to hear from the proponents. I'd like to hear from the planning board. I'd like to hear from the Board of Appeals. Is there a solution? I want to hear from our DPW director. Is there a solution? Because from what I'm hearing around, that's the number one objection. 
Well, yeah, and that, that intersection of one of up on Depot Street with Main Street, yeah. I mean, that's a horror show. But yeah, that's, that's the worst one where the accidents there. happen in Queen Anne and yeah. Maine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah those there's two. no lights. There's no, you have to take yeah. turns. And not yeah. Yeah. Nice well, that and so, and whole section. Yeah, the there's show. even a sign there that says "dangerous intersection." Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And yeah. so yeah. when when the backups occur at 124 in Queen Anne, they are going to go the other way. Sure. The other way. Yeah. To go to the backside to Dennis, especially if they're going into High Ends, wherever. Right. So I don't know the solution to it. Right. And I've looked. It, and I'm not an engineer right. by any stretch of the imagination, but those who are involved, we have to address it. Yeah. And that's without saying there are another 45 units coming online at the corner of, of basically Queen Anne and 124 mm -hmm. that they've already awarded a contract yeah. to Penrose to build units there. Right. So I'm firmly in favor, like Ralph, I want to see as much housing built as we Absolutely. can that's affordable. Yeah. we got to address some of these issues, and there are concerns, and we need to have a better discussion of that. And is 100 units, is 200 units, is 248 units the answer? I don't know. But I, I will say, phasing approach, I would not give approval to 248 until I saw the initial 80 plus units being built and seeing the impact it has on traffic. I could be very much in favor of that to mm -hmm. say, let's do it in a phase, let's see how it works out, let's see what the traffic is, let's see what the impact on the schools are, let's see what the impact is on our departments mm -hmm. before we go from 86 to 248. Exactly. So um, I will put those all together as a memo We'll work on that, mm -hmm. and we'll submit that if you're okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any other comments that or observations? No. Well, I thank you very, very much for your honest. It was a good, honest discussion of this, thank you. and I appreciate your taking time to do that today. And with that, I'll go around the room. Angie, anything else outside of that today? Nope, nope, that was a good discussion. Thank you. You look very good in that you. chair, by the way. Oh, um, <laughs> Ralph? <laughs> I have nothing. I'm okay. Nice to see you, Carol. Glad you're here. I'm good. John, thank you. Lauren? And Madam Director, anything else? Nothing else. Thank you. Then, in the spirit of time, and for those who are going to be sticking around for our next presentation for the program with UMass, um, which we're going to be moving to another room, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Is that today? Oh, can I say one thing? Oh, before I that motion. Want to say one, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm I sorry, wanted to compliment you on... The newsletter is fabulous. Oh, thank you. The new format. I thought it was absolutely wonderful. I read it cover to cover. <laughs> and you know, Carol, it's a great point. To those who may be watching this, if you are not receiving a newsletter from the Council on Aging, please call the department here oh, yeah. and get a copy. It is <clears throat> fabulous. It, it, it's unbelievable. And the, yeah, what, it's fabulous. And what it does is it highlights the programs and services being offered by this department. And if you are not associated with this department in any way, Please do so. so it's thank really you. amazing, the range of services. I mean, even I'm on the board, <laughs> but I'm reading the range of services, and I'm going, wow. You know, I mean, it just, it's amazing. It really is. I signed up for one of the activities today. Did you? Mm -hmm. There you go. What is it? I can't tell you. No. See, when I retire <laughs> no, the next so, time. Yeah. See, and I'm being interviewed. Yeah. I'm being vetted to see if I can play adult volleyball. So I don't know yet. I have to be vetted out by a member of this board. So <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, Nantucket Museum oh, presentation. Yeah, nice. Great. All right. So you made a motion to adjourn, sir. So much. And I heard a second. You did. Then I have a motion second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? It is a vote. Thank you all very much for being here today. Nice to meet you.